Um, you know, I'm not sure, honestly. Our purchasing team kind of handles all that. So yeah. I'm seeing an increase in theft, though. We're having all kinds of stuff stolen. Yeah. Most recently, they they took the key to my framer's lift and used their lift to get on the roof and take the sh bundles of shingles off the roof and steal those. What? So we had a whole house of shingles stolen. We've had windows stolen. We've had plywood just about every week get stolen, OSB. Windows, wow. everything. Getting bad. So. <clears throat> yeah, we have been. It's David, can you hear us? Early in the morning and it's dark out, but this last time we were able to get a description of the vehicle and file police reports. So not too much out here, I don't think, but definitely in David. Hello. Well, it never says that it's recording, it says it on here, but it doesn't say it out loud. I don't know if you can hear us or not. I can, are you asking about me? Because I can hear you. Thank you. Do we get anything? Not usually. Uh -oh. anybody out there that's anything Looks like a microphone indicator for David's moving, but I don't hear anything. Low energy. Okay. Low energy used to. Uh -huh. Let's see. Really? Yeah, that's what I. Really? Right. Yeah. There was a guy that was doing his fans and had blood on and he returned the whole load. Because the even the pickets were jacked. They were split in the middle. Just horrible. And the stringers were all bowed. Did you? Yeah, I don't. I don't go there. I don't go there. They're overpriced. I wish Matt would. <laughs> hey, uh, I'm trying again. Can you hear me? No. I'm trying to talk yeah, just I'd use it for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I used to be one of them. <laughs> I got all kinds of stuff. It does. That's yes, a favor. We don't have to pay to dump them. Can you hear us, David? Are we ready? But it doesn't say it out loud, so I'm not sure if we're recording or not. Because it didn't, you know how it always says we're recording? Look it, it up said on, on YouTube. The machine, but it didn't say it out loud. So that's why I'm not sure. Yeah, we're live. Can you hear us? Can you hear me, Chris? I think it works. Thank you for checking. No. Well, it says we're recording, and it didn't. I did it three times. All right. Today is June 20, 2022. The time is 7 10 p.m. And the Wiggins Board of Trustees special meeting work session is now in session. Uh, oh, I said June, huh? July. Oh, it says June on the. Yeah. Yeah. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible, liberty, justice, wrong. Roll call, please. Trustee Mandy Camilleri. Here. Trustee Jerry Schwind. Trustee Brian Flax. Here. Mayor Chris Franzen. Here. 
Mayor Pro Tem David Herbstman. Here. Trustee Bruce Miller. Here. Trustee Mark Strickland. Here. All right. <clears throat> Next up, approval of agenda. I'll make a motion that we approve the agenda. I'll second it. Motion has been made by Trustee Strickland, seconded by Trustee Miller. Roll call, please. Trustee Mandy Camilleri. Yes. Trustee Brian Flax. Yes. Mayor Chris Franzen. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem David Herbstman. Yes. Uh, Trustee Bruce Miller. Yes. Trustee Mark Strickland. Yes. All right, next up is work session. Discussion following follow up on the water and sewer rate study presentation. Okay, I just wanted one I've got to revise reports. Chris Rand, um, go past this Rand. Hey. Rand, sorry, ran a couple of extra scenarios and added a chapter eight and We've got the correct report this time, um, but at chapter eight to where it has, talks about inflation, at least ran the numbers. He and I talked after the meeting and inflation had just been announced at being 9.1% or something like that. Yep. The model only allows them currently to run 5%. Hmm. All our scenarios were run at 2.9%. So he ran scenarios, the two scenarios that we've been discussing about increasing the rates to, he ran those at 5%. And I've got those handouts for you as well um, to show how much more we would be out of budget if it assumed 5% inflation for five years. I don't know what's going to happen with inflation. I'm not. It can't keep going where it's at. Yeah, that, no. that's what we think. So um, I had him just run those two scenarios at right. what would we have to increase the rates to if we wanted to maintain the budget that we had estimated with the two original scenarios that or the two scenarios that we were um discussing and selecting um and it shows quite a bit in, of an increase and i wanted to show that and share that with the board um and share the new chapter eight just for your discussion review um as if we want to look at anything different or or stay with the 7150 increase for water rates and increase the sewer rates to forty dollars. Um, we did uh, discuss um, Bo and I and Chris um, about an average water user in the town is about four thousand. Um, using that number, the water and sewer bill, at the seventy-one fifty and the forty dollars uh, increases seventeen dollars a month. The water bill actually goes down for the average user, but their sewer bill goes up. Um, so what are you going to say four thousand in the summertime, fall, spring is because it. Irrigation water is not going to be calculated in the sewer rates. Right, exactly. Yeah. So say October or November to March, average use. Thanks for bringing that up. I'm getting a little nervous. <laughs> 4,000 in the summertime. That... Yeah, I'm going to say even myself, we're probably 10,000 in the summer with our irrigation.
so right now we're at 111, basically. I would say the last time I calculated it is probably maybe closer to 105, if, if I remember correctly. And it would be, um, wait a minute, I ran well, those numbers. Bo, do you remember those numbers? The average amount, it was like 112, yeah, and it goes so. up to like 127 or something like that. Right now, we're at 112. About 112. Like 129 if you add the 17 to it. So the bill would go up 17 bucks a month. Right, year. right. That's water and sewer combined. That's water and sewer combined during November, the non-irrigation season. And then in next year, what what, what percentage would we go up to keep up with is that? Five, five percent, five percent. So, and it would be the way the model was run. We could started as at the end of the year we could raise it you know if we decide to raise the water and sewer bills let's say in october we could go the whole year before you did it or you could bump it up immediately at five percent but my suggestion would be to go december to december and that's when you raise it basically that's only six dollars something like that right the five percent yeah but that's every year. That's every year. year. Okay. But as you get it, when it gets up to 150, you know, it's what seven and a half dollars or something. Yeah. Was that going to sunset or continue? Continue. Okay. So in five years, you'd be at 135 dollars for water and sewer at a five percent increase. That's base. Yeah. So your first thousand gallons, you're at 135 is your bill, and then obviously it's tiered after that, but. Because the water in five years will be eighty six ninety one base, and the sewer will be forty eight sixty two. Can one old person get by on a thousand gallons of water a month? Well, I think, I think it's kind of proven if you look at what our average water bill in town is. It's, it's pretty close. I don't, you know, I think a lot of these people have smaller yards, and, and I, or they just don't water at all. They don't even water. I'm just. Yeah. Would that, would that get would that get a person by an old person? Would I get an old person by a thousand pounds? I I think it would. It um, I I do a thousand sometimes and two thousand other times, but it just depends on if I you know do a lot lot of laundry. Yeah. You know, if you had two people, there's no way you can do it under a thousand. My wife and I we turn me in the choose 3,000 between the two of us. I was going to say anecdotally, Bruce, that when we do the meter reads, most of the married couples that don't have any children in the homes anymore are typically using two to 3,000 gallons, sometimes four, but the smaller households typically are 3,000 gallons or less. So if they've got their thousand gallon that, usage and then they'd pay maybe an additional six fifty for the yeah. extra two thousand gallons. Yeah. Yeah, that well, I mean, that's what my wife and I use in the winter. And that's not watering. I mean, I don't have the grass anymore. I don't have a lawn anymore. But so I don't water, but I'm one to two thousand gallons. I mean, it, it this here isn't bad for I'm just you know that they're just some of the old people are you know they didn't they didn't make 35 dollars an hour back in the day yeah they made two dollars and 84 cents back then. yeah right they don't you know they don't get that much social security well and i think we've i think as a board we've kind of taken that into consideration definitely that you know we don't want to hurt the older people in town that are on a fixed income because there's quite a few of them on a fixed income. So <clears throat> we got to watch out for the best interest of them. Exactly. Exactly. But we also, in a way we have to watch out for the best interest of the town and the future. And I think, 
I don't know, seeing the 5% now inflation in five years, we're negative 1.6, no, $2.8 million, which can be made up in a grant or, you know, a loan or whatever, but that's a lot more than what we had <clears throat> originally projected. Right. Well, I don't, I don't, you know, to break even, it's going to take a lot. And I don't think we're going to get to that point. Tom, remind me, were we changing the, the tier schedule too, or just the base? Base and the tier. And the tier. And how much was the tier going up? The tier was, it's, right now it's at 320 and it's really not a tier. It's going to start at 325 per thousand after the thousand. And then there's also, um, that increases 5% as well per year. Yeah. I mean, I mean you're talking the base. Couple no, the right. base yeah. and the tier system. The tiered's getting increased by 5% as right. well, right? Correct. But 5% $3 is. Yeah, if, so yeah, some change. I think I think we're at a good starting point. It's going to take a lot of work later on, but we have to start somewhere. I think uh, Trustee Erbsen um, had mentioned that you know it'll also produce some water conservation through the fact of the change, so yeah. people will just naturally change the behaviors along with it. Yeah. Yes, which. The downside of that is a lot of the metro areas found, and we may see it as well, is that your revenue decre decreases. Um, but some of the studies that Chris said he's looked at, over time, people revert back to what they were using. Yeah, I think it's a shock the first year or so, yeah. and then it's kind of like you get used to it and you just start paying it. And, 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 and this is based on the, the gallons we're using right now. Correct. That we have to treat yearly. Yes. Well, and it's also looking at future growth, but we've put that down. Well, as that's why when we have future growth, Tom, we need to go and we're still cheap on our, our damn, Cap fees. That and in we need to look at impact fees as well, but that's separate from the rates because the rates are what, in theory, and what we'd like to get to is paying for the day to day operation and then right. use exactly. the impact right. fees and the, and the tap fees to um, pay for the major capital improvement items that we're going to be needing. And unfortunately, we're dipping into the, have been dipping into the tap fees to pay for operational. And the operational is also what we're using to help offset some of the big capital projects. It's what we were dealt with over the years that we need to make some improvements, currently of CDPHE and our growth and just age of, of equipment. We need to get. We need to get that non-pot line run from mm -hmm. the old well into town. Mm -hmm. We can take care of these baseball fields. Yeah, and that's for baseball field, football field, parks. We can, to. and I've got that part of the discussion as well. And I've got a, excuse the pun, ballpark estimate. Don't have solid bids but we've got a good estimate on what that's going to cost because how much how, how much percentage is that goes to the ballpark <laughs> of our water you see right now of Yep. 
filters everything yeah exactly yeah right. it, yeah it's something that needs to happen i think that would be a good investment i totally agree right you got any other ideas Bo? Oh. i mean i'm just trying to cut down the usage of water that doesn't need to be a couple of I'll go ahead and skip to it, but a couple of things that Bo is working on, and one is in place, is piping raw water at the RO plant out of the RO plant into a meter, and people can do bulk fills if they're out in that area just using raw water, so water we're not treating. Yeah, and then he is close to having it. Um, one of the old south wells retrofitted to where we can add a meter the bladder doesn't leak anymore so we can use that as a bulk water station as well and then the non-potable line and we're proposing to put it in as if it could be used as potable so it gives us the most flexibility if we should need to that's about 3,900 feet to run it from the well to the booster station area. And that is going to cost roughly $140,000 to $150,000. And we can, I think we can afford, as you were saying, it's a good investment. We've got some reserves that we can pull that from. Um, if not, try to cover it in the budget for this year. It's one of the items that I want to bring forward in a discussion probably in July or maybe June if you want it yet this month um, as a budget amendment. Have we got pumps in the old pump station down there and they're not bad? They work fine. So all... All we'd have to do is just have enough supply. We wouldn't have to run it through our booster station. We're running it to the to boost. The We're proposing to run it to the booster station. So if in the future, yeah. at some time, we need to blend that water with South Platte water, we can do that. Without treating it. I, I think we'd probably have to treat it. We'd have to take samples to see if we could just blend it. And if we could, yes, but not the worst case, we could add a simple treatment to it. I'm calling it simple because it's more of a sand filter. We don't have to take out the TDS. We could blend that with a higher quality. We need to take out the manganese and the nitrates, but that is relatively less expensive than doing an RO treatment on that water. And you know, Tom, at one time, that was set up for that. Do you remember that, Bo? Yes, I do. Okay. And I've discovered that as well. And um, that's all I'll say. And going back to the comment Glenn made last Wednesday, are we able to do that then? I have to, before we do that, I will get the answer to that question. I don't have it today, but I believe we can because that was one of the plans going forward with the USDA project in the beginning. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> so to, we've jumped ahead, but to wrap up, do you want me to go ahead and really analyze spending the $140,000, $150,000 and get some hard bids and then come back with a um, budget amendment for that? Yes, yes. Okay. And you know, something we need to think about is rather than digging it with a backhoe, a trencher, you can get it trenched five and a half feet deep for about four bucks a foot. And I mean, it's 
rather than having a backhoe and I mean that thing they just walk right. Well, it depends. You got a good one, you can yeah, you got a good offer, you can ride. Right. <laughs> and we're proposing to do eight inch pipe. You know, do it once and do it right. Yeah. I agree. But I think what five and a half feet would be plenty deep, don't you? Yes, it would. And we got to confirm which side of the road we can put it in to make sure we've got the right array and all the, you know, don't have any conflicts. But I'm confident we could. We go to the east side because nobody knows who owns it. <laughs> <laughs> I think we own it, but I think we'd have to work with um, Norm Dennis. And that's a project we could do in the winter time. If we can get it done this year, it'd be great. But we're what month away from the tough water usage and we're surviving this year, but we could do it during the winter. And it's tough to get people to bid projects right now. Yeah. It's gonna get easier, Tom. You promise? It's gonna get easier. <laughs> you bet. And we are in tough water usage right now. So. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions on the water sewer rate study? The only question I've got is when do you want to put this up for your vote? Do you want it next month? This month? I would say this month. Okay. Sooner the better, I think. And when do you want it to take effect? 30 days after you know, it'd be the end of August. This is what's going to be. Or do you want to do it as an emergency ordinance? No, yeah, I don't think it needs to be an emergency. Okay. 30 days. Okay. And then Chris, every. And, and, you know, and you say 30 days, that almost gets us through. Almost gets us through the summer. Right. Uh, Chris is available to come next meeting to talk about the um, amendment to the rate study about the um, inflation. You, he'd have to join us remotely, but he has got that on his calendar if you would like him to come. I mean, if, if, we, if we go with that, it can't keep going up 9.1. We agree, we agree. I mean, there just is no way, because ain't nobody gonna even have a house. <laughs> Because the interest rates are going to keep going, right? And everybody's still fine with the seventy-one fifty and the forty dollars. Yeah, that's you know, comfortable. Yes. yes. Okay. Plus, and then the five percent. Yeah, five right. percent for five years. Yeah. Okay. I'll work. I mean, with... that's a start. Right. Yeah, we got to start somewhere. Okay. And then we can see a year from now we'll see where inflation is. Right. And yeah. And that five percent might. Yeah. I know chlorine has come way down last year i give 359 dollars for 50 pounds this year you can get it for 249 because of that plant oh down in louisiana yep blew up. yep do you want chris to attend next next meeting i or don't are you guys okay i, I think i'm so. good i'm good okay. i don't think, I think okay. we're gonna vote on yeah okay great and I will, do you want to see the 5% inflation scenario added to the report or just leave it as the inflation chapter that is in the copy I just gave you? So the 2.9%? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe we leave the 5% just as a worst case scenario. I, we can always get rid of it. Yeah. He's I agree. Got it. He's got it in the report as a discussion. I just had him run the scenarios I passed out to show you what we would have to do to if we wanted to maintain it. Um, we didn't include it in the report because it's we think it's just good extra information for you to have. Yeah. But it really we haven't he hasn't written the report to where it needs to be included. Well, I think. I think if we're going to publish this, it'd be good to show 5% okay. to the residents to say, hey, if it does stay at 5% in five years, 
This is the deficit. Okay. okay. I'll talk to Chris. And Instead we'll of 2.9 and then be like, oh, well, it went up to five. Well, I don't. It's easier to come back than it is to go up. Shit, the government can raise raise gas 100 percent so I know. Right. you're right i'll work with chris and we'll do one more addition to the report before i put it up on the web and finalize it okay perfect thank you all right moving on to discussion comments on fourth of july celebration just wondering what you thought and I've got my thoughts on things that we still need to work on. Bo and I've talked, but it was uh, with the pre-planning that we were able to get done and ordering things in January. I think uh, I know Bo was feeling a lot more comfortable this year, and I wasn't freaking out as much the day of. But um, just wondered what thoughts the board had from what you saw or what if you've heard anything. The only the thing public. I heard was a lot of people showed up at eight o'clock and it was already rolling. I mean, schedule it at 730. And then that's when, because there are a lot of people that just outside of town. You know, yeah, they only come for the parade. Okay. <clears throat> we, that's the only complaint I heard. Okay. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't hear any complaints. And now that we know how long a length of parade that size runs we can fine tune the start time a little bit better yeah i thought but if it's 7 30 it starts at 7 30. yes Not and we didn't have any glitches this year <laughs> <laughs> no i thought overall the the whole day went really well the one thought we've had is not to start it at 12 or one, go back to thinking about three, three, three or four, yeah. because it's so dang hot. Yeah. Um, we've just, Bo and I've talked and a few others have talked about that. I agree. And we are, Margaret and I talked the fireworks shooters. She wants to approach the fire department about getting some guys trained to shoot. And Bo and I both have offered to go talk as well at one of their meetings. I think the town would still need to purchase the fireworks in other communities. That's what the town has done, but the fire department has set them off. I don't know whatever happened. I mean, the fire department used to shoot them off. And they do in brush. Yeah. The, the change department. in the, the laws for the licensing. No, I think it was, I think it was a change in the government of Wiggins is what I think it was. <laughs> <laughs> Could have been that too. Well, I mean, if you can't get along, you can't get along. Yeah. That's that's what happened. Cause division. Okay. That'd be that'd be my only comment too with the fireworks is it seems like there was kind of too much pause and too much time in between them. And there was well, a lot of people that had left before they were all done. There's <laughs> and maybe some didn't go off. I don't know. That was that's, not planned. Yeah. Uh, the, <laughs> the shooter made a point of saying that the because they fired everything off via computer yep. mm -hmm. and they made a point of saying their computer was fully charged and it was but uh, for some reason it went dead midway yeah. through the show so the pause there in between was to get a generator hooked up to get the computer fired back up again. Gotcha. so mm. there was a we thought it was a dramatic intermission what we're telling you. <laughs> they set that the cannon off <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> but no i I heard multiple people say it was a good fireworks show. So, you know, and it was nice seeing a bunch of booths out there too. A lot more booths. And one of the things we did with the fireworks uh, racks, as opposed to breaking them down, we put them together which, with much heavier material this year and left them in place, put lifting eyes on all of the racks mm -hmm. and our suggestion to the council is that we if when we do the fireworks next year we order the same or similar show so we don't have to do anything except set the racks out in the field because yeah. that's incredibly labor intensive oh yeah uh, we had three people out on saturday before for about 16 hours putting all those racks together and after that my suggestion to 
the guys that helped as well as to the fireworks shooter, Margaret and her crew is, can we leave these together as opposed to taking them apart since we went to all the trouble to build them so much stronger? And she's like, absolutely. That makes a tremendous amount of sense. And I don't know why we used to break them down because it made the cleanup the next day very, very fast. Why did, did you use double headed nails again? No, we use Torx screws. There you go. <laughs> That's what I said the first year. I said, this is the stupidest thing I ever seen. In my life. We used torque screws and two by sixes and we gave the bigger mortar racks plenty of footing so that they didn't go anywhere. And they were all in one piece when we finished and they're all in the bar. Everything behind. was screwed. Yep. So it worked out well. well. Part of it from an assembly standpoint is you have to have some place to attach the wires. So as you're firing, you don't have cross contamination with your shooting signals. And, and what we did, Mark, after that yeah. is uh, that was the only question I had for Margaret the morning of the shoot as they were getting everything wired up. And they just went ahead and put a few double headed nails in the racks so that they could run their wires separate. Yep. And that's all that maybe three to six uh, concrete type double headed nails had to be removed off the racks at the end of the shoot. And they used the lifting eyes too. They wrapped them around there. So, yes. I had four people complain about not enough tables and chairs. I don't know. Tom and I have discussed that. We had all of the town's tables and chairs out there, and we've discussed uh, getting some more for next year, but it's just a question of when we can get them at the best optimal price. And yeah. Getting that set up, but it worked out really well. We let the fire department use the tables and chairs for the pancake breakfast, and our agreement the last two years has been we take them over to them, they use them for the pancake breakfast, and then they – bring them over, set them all up for us. We'll just have more next year. Yep. No, I think it went off good from what I can remember. <laughs> <laughs> I was not. You were having hey, a good hey, time. My, my wife had a family reunion. Did you find that candy that I threw in your yard? Yes, I did. Perfect. The lawnmower did. The lawnmower did. <laughs> We didn't want to leave you out. <laughs> All right. Anything else on 4th of July? We're going to have a debrief soon with the volunteers that did help just to wrap up and plan, start the planning for next year. Okay. Perfect. Next project updates and progress. I just want to give you a quick rundown on some of the activities and things that I'm involved in and you might have questions about. A staffing, I'm pretty close to having a person hired for that position for the park and rec and events coordinator. Just getting or re-engaging with who the company that does our background checks to run that background check. Um, other than that, references are checking out and the person is willing to accept the job. We're just crossing the T's, dotting the I's type stuff. So I hope in the next week or so to have that process completely finished. We had three candidates. Um, so did have a choice, but I think I've got the right one. Um, and I... I was in the interview. I had Cynthia Pope in the interview and Hope in the interview. So I think a good interview panel. Um, we had, as far as public works, we had a couple of guys we thought were interested and they got higher paying jobs. Uh, we've got a couple of other new young guys interested. So we're waiting to see if they're going to apply as well so that I can um, Bo and I can talk to both of them at the same time. Is that, is that just part time then? No, it's full. We're wanting to go full time. We've got one young man that we're, he's interested in some part time work to start out with potentially. And that might be a good way to try. He can try us out. We can try him out if he's interested. If he doesn't want to give up his currently current paid job. The other young, the other young man is, helping on a project and wants to get that project finished before he decides, but we'd like him to go up. We're going to ask him to go ahead and apply 
and let us at least go through the interview process. Well, I know the older gentleman you have working now that takes care of the park, he works and works and works. Well, um, they are a great team with Bo, and I think that's made us survive the summer. And I think that, but as Bo will attest, he's he and his crew have gotten a lot of the little projects done that have been languishing for years. Yeah, and I think they they tackle them, they stay on it, and concentrate, and they don't do the silly stuff that. Um, causes us issues down the road. And I can tell you guys have spent time at the ball fields because the ball fields look better. Agreed. Yeah, they do. Thank you. look good. Day to day as we can. It's mostly the goat heads. I haven't noticed near as many of those. And again, we can thank uh, Derek Derek Pope and Simplot for yeah. spraying and they're due to come out and spray again. And we've got our, one of our guys is out spraying quite a bit now as well. Uh, the sewer line project go for excavating is playing the waiting game with Wilson and company who is BNSF's scheduling and safety coordinating company. We're waiting to have a, meeting so everyone's on the same page they had pot hauling scheduled this week i don't think they've been out they're trying to get the training scheduled for all their guys has got to be safety training through bnsf mm-hmm. um i've got Bo and his crew and even myself uh, slated for that so i can step foot on the project site however short it's going to be because we anticipated it's just going to take a matters of a week or a month to get done once it gets started. Um, so they're playing that waiting game. I'm waiting for an update from them. I asked them last week um, for an update, and they're still waiting to hear back from Wilson and company. They also have to schedule two inspectors, railroad inspectors, to be out there while the project's going on. Um, I laughingly say it's to tell us when a train is coming, but it every railroad project or related project I've been on, we've had to have those. It's no ifs and or buts, no matter which railroad you're dealing with. The federal government. They're they're tough to deal with. Yeah. I mean so, it's just um the water tank project with USDA, um Diamondback has along with the town submitted a revised engineer and owner contract. Um, There's some details that Melinda had asked to be stricken or added. They want uh, her to take another look at that. And if it's a state statute requirement, then it's okay to leave in. If it's a nice to have, uh, we're probably going to take it out because it, uh, could impact the schedule even more so if it's a non-state statute type item like indemnity that that we typically have to change then it has to go to the their national attorney and it could be three months to 12 months before it gets turned around so we're going to think long and hard about some of the changes we've requested and melinda's aware of that um, so, so that's moving forward. I think we'll have that contract resolved in a month or so. So we don't have like a timeline on when that's going to be started. Not yet that I want to wager to risk my neck saying. So as soon as, as soon as that contract's done and all the paperwork's, you know, checked and double checked, then I'll, I'll be able to give you a better timeline. Um, on the wastewater project, um, we're going to start doing some more monitoring out at the Wiggins North or Knievel property. We've got to determine background uh, TDS levels and water levels out there. 
uh, similar to what we did over the past year at our current site for CDPHE. So we're going to get that started. It's not as on a as critical time frame, but we might as well get it done right now. So we're going to propose locations to uh, CDPHE. Um, Lauren and I with Lauren with Diamondback and myself talked last week and we've selected some locations and they're putting a map together. We're hopeful that um, we only need to drill one new monitoring well. We can use an existing domestic well that's out at the Craig's place in the stock well. And then um, Central Water is going to be drilling a monitoring well that we can use as well, hopefully, is what we're proposing. Um, Main Street, uh, John Ennick and his staff finished a, a design uh, in, I'll call it, spec diagram for where the curb cuts need to be and what the slopes need to be. And he's proposing an alternative of putting in a culvert over one section to decrease the amount of water that's flowing on the surface. Bo's getting that to another, to two people to bid. And I've got one person, I'll send it to the bid. And again, that's just for curb and gutter. Um, so I'm still hopeful that we can get that done this year. Um, Have we got multiple bids back? That's what we're, we've gotten one bid, but two of them wanted to see more of a design, not a oh, yeah. footage. So we're yeah. sending that info to them right. to get the bids back. Um, if we want to pave or repave Main Street, um, I earlier this spring, late spring, summer, did get, did request three quotes for doing the paving, what could be done on Main Street uh, between 2nd and 5th Avenue. Um, if we wanted to extend it or do it, I'd probably extend it all the way to Central Avenue so that the whole section is done. But that is the quote I got back from 2nd to 5th was about $340,000. And that was for a roto mill and then put down a thin layer of asphalt. Um, I'm guessing if we added the section between uh, Central and Second Avenue, we're probably looking at closer to $400,000. Um, one I wanted to, and that was a future item as well, but do you want me to, I think we can cover it, through capital improvement, but it depletes our capital improvement budget. Or we can do the curb and gutter first and then see where we're at and what it looks like. Um, so, but I just wanted to bring that forward as that's what it's likely to cost, just to give you an idea. I would say maybe work on the curb and gutter and wait okay. on the rest of it. That's what I would do, but I wanted to at least share well, the numbers with you. With the uh bill or the ballot the ballot question with the tax increase if we can get that to pass that no, would be very beneficial yeah hey tom that's another thing on our our are we are we still going to try to get that tax increase yes what one 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 and a half one well that's your I love the way you you uh, well, move my agenda a lot. Um, <laughs> well, hey. Bruce quit school because they had recess. Yeah. <laughs> um, got time. Right now, right now, what we have discussed and um, is to do one percent just for roads, and that's what I wanted to run by and make sure everyone is still comfortable with is 1% for roads. And I would put that on the agenda for next month or for the next meeting, as far as passing that ordinance and resolution to set that ballot question. Um, options are, you can look at more, 
you could look at again i'm just asking the question right. do you want to share it with parks 75 25 percent some little bit or just keep it as one item one percent is one dollar on a hundred dollars correct go to brighton Oh, I, I've been there. Yeah. Yeah. Go. Yeah. The Kono Firestone. I just went to American Furniture and I was like, what is this fee? Hmm. They're like, oh, uh, yeah. And you don't have to definitively decide tonight. We can always pass it as a emergency ordinance to put on the ballot in August. But August is our drop dead date on setting a ballot question. The, uh, well, that's we have to have it into the Morgan County on the 29th. They've already been asking me. They want the ballot questions and they want to invite of, August, August. of July. Oh, of July. The deadline is and it has been July 29th. Last year was the 28th or something. It was on our meeting night. Sure. Mm -hmm. I thought we had until August and September. They said they want to know what the questions are going to be and which ones are um, the tax ones and which ones are the other questions like the then i stand corrected we have to decide next week <laughs> yeah they've been asking they asked last week for that information i think keeping it at one percent base for this the uh streets i think everybody's pretty motivated to get that fixed you good with that bruce yes Chris? Well, I'd go 2%, but I'd go. Might be a hard hey, sell. I mean, people, yeah. if people can drive down a smooth street and they don't have to worry about their kids walking out in the street and they can ride their bikes on a sidewalk, hmm. it, yeah. you know, it's not going to have a problem passing. I think it's a catch-22, though, because it, it, it's easier to raise it once than to go back and raise it twice and increase it again but we're also raising it at the same time we're raising water and sewer rates too you know you don't want right. to raise rates on everything with we just raise tap fees then we're raising water and sewer rate fees then we're going to raise the sales tax you know i don't want to i don't want to gouge people either so. well, we've already <laughs> diamond, we i know we washer and driver i know get a 50 dollar from that <laughs> that <laughs> I didn't go, that was pro code. That's what that was. And I didn't go, I didn't go along with that. I didn't like that, but it is what it is. It's done. Yeah. 1%. 1%. 1%. Yeah, we'll get that ready. <clears throat> and we're also including on the ballot language, changing the election date from April to November. Okay. Okay. Um, Central Emergency Connect. I just need to send out requests to get cost. I've got four different vendors' information finally, and I plan to send that out tomorrow and get costs for the equipment itself, and then um, decide, bring that back to you guys, and then we can decide about. Is I want to gauge how much that fits within what we budgeted this year for the emergency connect. So that's why I'm getting cost on the equipment. I'm hoping by dragging my feet a little bit, maybe costs have come down and gotten a little bit more reasonable. Tom, you said central, were you referring to? Uh, Morgan well, County quality okay. water. I'm so okay. Yes. Okay. Um, comp plan. We sent out the RFP a couple of weeks ago. The responses are due on Monday. Um, so I'm hopeful we'll get some good um, qualified responses. I've heard from one. So I'm thinking we either wrote a really good RFP or people are just too dang busy. So we'll see what the responses come Monday at four o'clock. So that's the major updates on different projects. Okay. Next up, discussion of current status of 2022 budget. 
And I'm sorry these didn't print out the way I wanted to. It didn't staple and it printed on different size papers, even though I thought I had printed it. Is this through June, Tom? Where we've got the numbers through June. On some, like the water bills just went out. So we don't have the June water bill numbers yet. I'm not even going to pass these out because they are too jacked up. I'll just discuss it with you guys, if you don't mind. And I can, I didn't, for some reason, they were just wasn't cooperating tonight. So I apologize. Um, for sales tax, we're running slightly ahead. The, this year on the 1%, we're keeping the good trend. Uh, <laughs> we're probably, uh, we're like at 147 this year on the 1% sales tax. Um, compared to last year, I think we were down in the 130s. So we're a good $10,000, $12,000 ahead through June. Um, a little bit closer than what I'd like, but it's... Um, when I send these to you, I think it'll be eye-opening that through 20, twenty eighteen, we were in the twenty thousand range and below for sales tax, and starting in twenty nineteen, we jumped into hundreds of thousands of dollars for sales sales tax, and with what I've talked with folks about is we think that's due to the Amazon and the online order mm. uh, coming to cities. Um, so that's made a huge difference um, in your budget uh, compared to where we were prior to me coming on board. So it's not all me, it's and you, it's the dollars that were coming in. So no wonder we were hemor hemorrhaging a little bit. I just don't have enough data yet to say what's a good trend yet, but it is consistently to overall do an increase. So I think we're looking okay from a sales tax revenue. Um, no wonder that's all. That's all the same sheet <laughs> for use tax um we are quite a bit ahead on that we had a huge payment unless now i think it's we're we're about uh i'm gonna say um running about even I don't believe one of the numbers here, but um, so I think we're, we've been running in the $30,000 range, whereas last year we were running in the 20s or the single digits. So with the exception of, of April, we had a dip down to like $3,000, but we've been at 27,000 in January compared to 11,000 last year in January. So it's still pretty strong, but remember we increased the um, sales and use tax by a percent late last year. So that does make a difference. Um, road and bridge, for some reason this year, we're already almost double from last year total. Um, but I'm going to say that's probably due to the state and everyone letting loose some of that money. We're at 73000 this year, and we are only at 46000 last year for the entire year. So that's looking, looking good. Um, building permits is really hard to do year to year because we've got pro code. They get 60% of our building code this year. 
uh, building permits. So it's hard to really say, you know, it's down what we've collected net. Um, so it's hard to- really But you budgeted that time, right? Yes. I hope I'm gonna have to look at if I budgeted the right, yeah. To, I took six. I took the sixty percent off of what I was planning, but it was hard to um, predict where we we're going to be at. Let me ask you, Tom. What exactly does Pro Code? They get sixty percent right off the top, right? And they do all the inspections except for uh, plumbing and electrical. Plumbing, plumbing and electrical. electrical. Do they do the plan review too? They do plan review, but that's an extra cost mm. in that we're charging for that as well. But they get, I want to say it's 65% of that cost. So what does Hope do now? She's more of a permit tech as far as helping make sure that they get the right forms filled out and they get their physical copies of their permits and coordinating with um, ProCode. And that's, and that's it. Well, that's not all she does, but that all that's all she does related to building code. And Bo doesn't have to do the inspection, except if it's water line that's why related. We've done it. Yeah. Take some pressure off him. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's been a good relationship. And then, and I haven't heard complaints from any of the builders. Um, sewer, sewer and water sales are just slightly ahead where we were last year. Um, I think we're going to end up about where I thought we were this year on the, on the rate sales until we increase it and then we'll see an increase. Does that include bulk? Yes. Okay. And we had a big bulk user with the highway project. That's so that like should five give million us gallons or something. How much did you estimate, Bo? But a half we figured they were using between 250,000 and 400,000 gallons a day when they were doing the uh, project. So uh, we're anticipating that it's in the millions of gallons of bulk water use and we're just getting ready to uh, send them the bill for all their water usage as well as for some of the equipment that got damaged that they agreed to pay for meter are they going to be extending another project like that anytime soon uh, we've got several bulk water users now the uh, excavators at the school project there's a project going out out just uh, east i'm sorry west of town off of Highway 144, mm -hmm. uh, there's a small project going on at the dairy over here, and then there's a couple of uh, guys coming in and out uh, doing bulk water. So I've got typically three to five people pulling off the system every day during the week. It's not near as much as they were doing for the highway project, but it's again, it's nice revenue. And as Tom and I have discussed, one of them is uh, filling up at the RO, and we're going to be directing a couple of them very soon to the Old well, and it's all metered. It's all metered. They all have meters, and they've all paid the higher deposits that you guys approved, and so far, no problems. And we're Great. talking about adding another meter backflow um, setup because we're getting that increased usage, and they typically pay for themselves. Yeah. Um. Probably the last one I really want to talk about that's significant is we got $146,000 from the uh, America Rescue Program Act, the ARPA funds, um, and that we have discussed using for water and sewer projects. I've got a, did a report back in April and I now need and I may need to bring something formal to the board so that we can formally say which project we want to use that for. Um, I have thought about using it for the headworks and the automatic grate out at the sewer plant, but I'm hopeful that we'll 
get some funding through the um, discretionary spending at the federal level. So I'm holding off on that. Um, and also, if you recall, they were willing to help potentially fund the uh, water tank project. Uh, so hopefully I'll hear something soon on that, but it could be next year before I hear on that. So we've been after a new bar screen for five years. And it's nothing's ever happened. Yeah. So that's where we are revenue wise. Um, as I come back and I'm going to bring back to you guys budget amendments, I'm going to do a deep dive into our budget for this year. And as I mentioned at the end of the audit last, uh, last month, is I'm going to do any type of corrections early in the year rather than waiting for the audit to be done. So I think we'll have yet another discussion about that in, in August as well. But I wanted to give you an idea that I think we're looking pretty strong um, for this year. Some of the light items may have be, be busted, but I think the total overall budget is looking good this year from my last look at it. Are you going to put 9.1 on expenditures? Nine point. <laughs> for inflation are you for oh year? <laughs> yeah. i don't know what i'm going to do for next year let's wait till december it might be at 10.1 any sleep think uh, about gee, it gee thanks <laughs> well actually that's part well we've already talked about, well we got one more potential budget amendment item that i'd like to talk about um that is adding the electrical to Kiowa Park, um, that area. To do it correctly, Bo's gotten a quote from Morgan County REA and the correct way to do it, to follow our codes and to make it more resilient would be to underground it. The problem with that, it's not cheap, but it's the right way to do it. The estimate we got was about $14,500 to do that project versus probably five or $6,000 if we went overhead. But eventually, if we do a, a recreation center or if um, we do an early child care center out there, we're going to need the additional power. What kind of service is that, Tom? I mean, what, what, what is oh, that? I'm going to let Bo can talk about that. Spot. Basically, that's the primary service that would go out to the north end of Kiowa Park from uh, from the uh, other side, north side of County Road P, P Johnson. Uh, fairly close to the Thomases. <clears throat> go <clears throat> under the road, mm -hmm. under the ground, over to roughly the playground area. We have already put in about a thousand feet of two inch conduit that originally we were going to use for the primary. And then I, after the discussions with Tom and the REA, they're like, it would be better to use that for the secondary electrical for the lights on the playground, the lights at a future potential bathroom, the lights for the future potential fields. And they're going to go ahead and they recommended that we do an underground bore all the way over to uh, where the playground was. And this had been discussed years ago uh, prior to the playground going in that we were going to come off of the new Johnson street and it just got missed. And then every time we got a bid on the bore to go under the ground, it just kept going up. And then the REA recommended that we came off of the North side of County road P and it gave us plenty of, uh, amperage capacity for everything that was going to go out there. And then we already have the conduit buried for all of the, the lights and for the future, uh, parks on at least the east or I'm west, sorry, the side. west side of mm -hmm. uh, Johnson. Johnson. So to get power to the other side and it's going to take another bore, right? Coming off of what, where's it going to a pole or a sub, a sub panel or what? Basically it would be going to a, a uh, coming off of a pole and going to a, a panel or a pedestal right by the playground. And then we could take 
several tie-offs after that going in different directions. And again, it had been talked about being done as far back as I can recall, at least five years ago. I'm, I'm behind that. Um, the HOA, we've set aside funds to put in sod at the playground because it's just weeds and Texas tax. So I can't do anything until we get power in over there. But for future expansion down the road, we need to do it right the first time and not fork over money now and then in two years fork over twice what we could have done right now. That waste would be money. solely the town of Wiggins power. Yes. <laughs> Let me caveat that. If you remember, I talked last week about the early child care center. I know. If, I've, been, I've been thinking about it, Tom. <laughs> I don't think you want to know what I got to say. If, if that should happen, that would also be <clears throat> that benefit of that power. But they would pay us for that. We could either have them pay us for that or depending on how much we add to that building to make it more of a have a community center or room as well. Maybe that's part of our contribution. But that could be decided at a later, at a later date. I did meet with Dola and the technical assistant group and USDA and Rosie late last week. And we're gonna start looking at concepts of where that could potentially be. And I'll be bringing more information back to you as we're moving forward before anything's finalized. Well, the kids got to have lights. I mean, they play basketball down there since some lights got up down there. They play basketball down there till nine, 10 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's, but I'm tired of giving stuff away, Tom. You, I mean, you know, I, I was thinking about that. And I don't know if you want to discuss it right now or not, but we were, we're going to give that child care. We're going to, we are going to rent them the land or give it, donate the land to them. We'd have to lease the land to them. What, for $10 a month or whatever? That's one thought that I've had, but yeah. it's going to be the board's decision. And there's also been thought of, do they build the building? We own the building for X number of years, and then they get to take it over. There's a lot of moving pieces yet to be decided upon. But I, I think it's a worthwhile project. If the board's agreeable, at least we explore. Because the town needs a child care center. Yes, we do. Yeah. I agree. <clears throat> I don't want the and town to give everything away. Because they're not there to break even. I can tell you that. They're going to be making some major yeah. bucks. That's correct. It's also why I'm having the discussions with everyone is trying to find some grant money, not only through DOLA, but can then she go after funding through Gates or Betcher or someone like that as well for the funding. Well, I, th I don't think that $14,000 is going to kill us. I don't either. I wouldn't bring for, it up. For, for that power. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's just. Okay. I'll bring that forward as well as a budget amendment. What I'm planning, what I'd like to do is bring um, the non potable line, the electrical. Um, I'm going to wait on the paving but bring that in separately than a regular 
budget amendment uh, just to true up the budget, just to keep it clean. Mo, we still have power out there at the pump station, right? Uh, yeah. And I mean, all we would have is basically the price of the pipe and the and to get it from point A to point B. The pipe and the, the valving and to get it from point A to point B, get it put in the ground. That'll be interesting to see how much that is. Yeah. And I'll, I think for my sanity not to have to come to the well twice, sorry for the pun, I'm going to get some more solid fit. Or we act on it. And that'd have to be pressure pipe, wouldn't it? Yes. Yeah. In order not to do it twice, if we decide to maximize its potential. It's free water. That's all I'm going to say. It's free water. We don't have to augment it. Mm hmm. Well, and just the stress it's going to take off of the whole system exactly. is saving money right there. 35% is a big number. <clears throat> That's a huge number. Yeah, we'll have the power and pumping costs, but no yeah. treatment costs. Yeah. And, and see that 35%, you know, that frees up some water, but it's 35% less water we have to treat. Yep. Yes. That's exactly the savings. That's the cost. That's the savings. Yeah. Yes. And running it through the pumps and the, everything. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. That's where all that cost saves right there. Okay. Um, one of the other items I had is to talk a little bit about budget priorities for 2023. Have you, I know I'm hitting you cold, but want you to start thinking about that. I'm going to start preparing the budget based on what we've been doing, because I still think water and wastewater are priorities for funding. Um, I think taking a look at, um, you know, we've been doing some storm drainage improvements. We have to do the storm storm drainage before we do any paving. So continue with that. Um, and then also taking a look at um, continuing to maximize DOLA grants potential. Like we're gonna do the comp plan first, but then follow that with the land development code update. And I still need to look at getting a, um, ideas on what we can do with impact fees. But I don't see a lot of changing of priorities versus what we did for 2022. But if the board could start thinking about that, we'll have another just budget discussion meeting soon because I wanna to try to get the budget done before December this year. I would agree. I think keep with the momentum. <clears throat> and Bruce, you're correct. It's going to be harder than heck to predict. That's why you make the big money. But. <laughs> <laughs> and as I've talked with Bo, I'll probably be stingy again. So, and see, I wouldn't, I don't know what does it, like I said, inflation just can't keep going. Like right. This. Either that, or it, it's not going to be, it's going to, I don't even want to talk about it. it ain't going to be a recession. It's going to be depression. Yeah. We're gonna, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, on funding, just to, to let you guys know, I've already had contact with um, the group out of the state for the state Revol revolving loan fund and the grant um, uh, section to have the next level of discussions on 
uh, using some state money in addition to USDA money for the water and wastewater projects. Every year I'm required by the end, by end of June, yeah, end of June to update our, um, elig what they call an elig eligibility study and it, or a, yes, eligibility study. And it's basically a look ahead for 20 plus years on what our, what our water and wastewater improvement needs are going to, are going to be. Um, having done and gone through the rate study this year, we were able to really give some good numbers to that. And that's the first step in the project the process of trying to get additional funding out of the state, which I think with some of the infrastructure bills coming up that um, hopefully there'll be some additional money. So the next step is I need to fill out another survey form for them about some of the specific projects and then have a pre-application meeting is what they call it to talk to all the different funding groups at the state water quality folks. So I call it affectionately dialing for dollars. I know we need growth, but I think we ought to take care of what we have right now. I mean, just get, we need to get caught up. Right. It would be nice to be caught up and then we can think about growth. We're not caught up. I mean, I'm, that, it ain't no bullshit. That's the way it is. And we it's, need to take care of what, what we have right now. And we're not alone with that with a lot of towns. A lot of the out of sight, out of mind pipes and things like that all over are that in that same situation playing catch up. Yeah, but a lot of people want to live, just keep it, and then you just get farther behind. Right. You, mean, we're a long ways behind right now. I mean, you know it. But I will say, the board knows it, but we are with the rate study and with the actions that we're taking, we're starting to chip away at it. Okay. I already don't have any other items. The only and the only future agenda item is I'll be routinely wanting to have budget discussions coming up. And when we have them, just strictly a budget meeting, budget, budget workshop. Do you wanna to try to do a Saturday morning? <laughs> I did say Thursday evening. <laughs> uh -huh. not, not what? <laughs> It'd be probably I might have a late August or September. I have a couple golf tournaments in August. That's all I can tell. I can't. Thirteenth for sure. Okay, if you can think about dates and send send them to me when you're not available. It, and if I'm not here, no big deal. I want yeah. you, I want your input. <laughs> yeah. You want my butt. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right. Anything else on? Nothing on. I don't session? have anything further to add. Okay. Went through my notes. All right. <clears throat> Next up, consideration of resolution number 22-2022. A resolution approving the purchase of mobile data terminals for the Wiggins Police Department. And I don't know if the chief is still here, but I can start it if he joins us. It'd be great. Um, in the budget for this year, we included um, acquiring mobile data terminals or laptops for the police officers. Um, 
with the body worn cameras, it becomes just as important because they can view their footage while they're in the car instead of waiting it to be downloaded. But the other advantage to having the mobile data units, and there's several, but um, probably some of the more critical ones are they can communicate and start their cases with dispatch with instead of calling in clear cases on it. It brings us in line with all the other departments in the county. They've all got modal data units in their cars. Um, so it allows the officers to communicate with them and allows them to search some of the um, crime databases or look up driver's licenses and things of that nature. Um, the reason I'm bringing it to you is they're not inexpensive. Um, they're uh, roughly, you know, close to $3,000 a piece, but they're the rugged um, encased laptops. They also have a SIM card to where they can be um, communicated, communicate out with more than just Wi-Fi or the internet uh, in their state-of-the-art computers. We looked at a couple others. There were some that some other agencies sent us, but they were four years old already. Um, and some one of the ones we looked at was not rugged and didn't have the specifications that we wanted. I did work through Dell and the state contract, the state bid. And with doing that, we were able to save about $1,000 per machine for the identical machine. So um, the chief and I are asking that the board allow us to move forward with, with this purchase. Um, it's a budgeted item, we've got the budget. Um, and if you'll recall with the body worn cameras, we got a grant for those. And then the chief has secured another grant for those cameras as well. So if you recall, we were paying about 28,000, 29,000 up front, and then gonna pay the bulk of that over a four year time frame. We can still pay it out over, over a four year time frame but it's only going to be a total of $6,000 roughly that were not being funded by the state through a justice grant for the body worn cameras. So um, we're able to use some of that future money. You know, we don't have to have that looking forward in the budget moving forward. So um, I, I think we'll be sitting okay with making this purchase. As far as the data systems, that can be run through Viero or Verizon? Or it's through Viero slash T-Mobile. That's the most reliable that we have. They're not all 100% re reliable, but they have found from the police standpoint, it's the most reliable for them. Is this cost going to include that service or is that yes. going to be separate? Well, that's a separate cost, but it's about after we've paid for the activation it's about twenty dollars a month for the extra SIM card, but for, for we have three to have of them per twenty per, per card, per. and that's actually for the actual body worn cameras. I'm going to have to uh, research what that charge is, but I'm guessing it's going to be another twenty, so probably forty dollars in addition per um, officer. For officer, but well worth it in my book. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it'll it'll help with their workload management to not have to come back here and do that when they can do it on site. Yes. So does that mean our ordinances will get enforced now? <laughs> hey, we give, we'd like a little back. I will yeah. pass that on, but please. I'll make a motion to adopt resolution 22-2022, a resolution approving the purchase of mobile data terminals for the Wiggins Police Department. I'll second. Motion has been made by Trustee Strickland, seconded by Trustee Camilleri. Roll call, please. Trustee Mandy Camilleri. 
Yes. Trustee Brian Flax. Yes. Mayor Chris Franzen. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem David Vecino. He yeah, was. here. I'm. Yep, I'm here. Yes. Yeah. Herbstman. Yep. Can you hear me? Yes. Trustee Bruce Miller. Yes. Trustee Mark Strickland. Yes. Great. Thank you. Sure. And just to let you know, we the police department starts training and getting the body worn cameras next week. All right. Anybody else got anything else before we close? All right. The time is 836 and the Wiggins Board of Trustees special meeting work session is now adjourned. All right. Thank you. Bruce, I missed the 